Could be two. And the Reds set up a rubber match tomorrow. Where the Sox bats just could not do anything against his bullpen. No, they got to Lodolo. Yeah, that Reds bullpen shut down the White Sox offense. Five and a third scoreless innings. Only gave up two hits. Alberto and Zavala homered, but John India and TJ Friedel at the top of the lineup for the Reds. Combined to go five for seven with three runs, four RBIs, and the White Sox lose it tonight, five to three. It is Subaru White Sox post game live here with the legend Isaac again. I'm Chuck Garfine. Wasn't much going on with the game. I think we have to somehow make this post game show better than that game. We always, always yes. we do. Yes. The post game is a little shorter than the game, though. You know, it's funny because when you see uh, the offense did after the first couple of innings after the home run, yes, they, they got shut down big time by the Cincinnati bullpen. There's no doubt about it. But in the meanwhile, uh, I think I, I like the way Clemens your pitch go to San Pedro. But it, I think you make one mistake that was with both inside. Yeah. And I say all day long with two strikes, you run the ball into the guy that was working with fly ball, five fly ball, broken bats. All of a sudden, the boys say, not that in. A little bit, take a little bit of the player, and he gave up home, the home run. Yeah, I thought we were going to start this show talking about how great Clevenger pitched tonight and how he won the game. And he was only going to give up one run. He had great control of almost all of his pitches throughout the whole game. It was just that one pitch, and it's a three run homer. You could see the pain on his face. When uh, as soon as he hit it, he's like, oh, "Are you kidding me?" And it's a bam box. You can't make a mistake. That's what like I'm gonna say. You know, in, in that ballpark, you better be perfect. You yeah. better be good. You better be down. You better make uh, uh, any mistake. You make around the plate. Anybody he hit a home run in that ballpark. That's why it's a lot of headache when people's going there. They try to change the way they pitch. Yeah. All the some they make a lot of mistakes. But I think Clevin, you keep the ball in very well and throw a lot of strikes. One bad pitch kill him. I don't want to say this, but I'm gonna say it. I wish. Jake Berger was in the lineup today. I it, wish, it wasn't I wish the ballpark. Oh. They show him in the ballpark eating. <laughs> he, looked, he, he had to be at least his brother. They look like a lot. The, there, guys, there was a Sox fan at the game it, who looked like he might have been his... Related? Well, if, friend? if Jake's a burger, this guy was a quadruple no, that's burger. A, that's a triple one. <laughs> that, that's a triple one. Um, but, I mean, I, you don't want to make these excuses up, but they didn't have Aloy tonight. They didn't have Moncada. I mean, teams are shorthanded, but it's games like these where they were just one hit away. And you're like, oh, we didn't have that guy. We didn't have that guy. You don't want to make excuses. But that's, that's when you ha- everybody has to step it up. Yeah. You know, everybody has to step it up when we do miss and, and, you know, sorry to interrupt you, but you know who stepped it up today? Hans Roberto and Sebi Zavala. Yeah, they both were. Ho- yes. Then, and, and they... they those two guys down the line, no, they, they, White Sox has been in trouble a lot down, yes. down in, the battle, you know, in the battle line, no, very bad. 190, 180, 200. I, I think those guys step it out the way they did today. Uh, they can help the big boys. That will help. All right. So last night the White Sox hit two home runs. Two more here tonight. It starts with Hanser Alberto, who's playing third base for Yo Mikata, for Jake Berger. He made a great defensive play late in the game as well. How about we see this? Here's the home run. Nice pitch. It was kind of right down Broadway, too. That was the, he was a little bit up front. Like you said, one mistake out here. You put the barrel, the bat in the right place. You will come out with a home run. And that was on a 1-2 count. And this was a lefty on the mound. The White Sox normally do good with lefties. I was hoping he'd stay in for about five innings. Instead, he didn't last that long. Ain't no pitch bad enough. To... <laughs> he he almost pitch, pitched bad he enough. He almost pitched bad enough to, to they can leave him there. All right, so that made it 1-1. And our uh, blue sky restoration cleanup hitter is Sebi Zavala. Great seeing the uh, jacket out again. So Zavala's in an 0 for 19 slump. And we'll look at the bat flip here. For a guy who uh, doesn't hit a ton of home runs, he's like, yeah, I just, I'm going to leave this here. Well, it's one thing about it. He was very quick in that pitch. It was pounding him in, was sliding out and down his, uh, in his shoes, keep swinging out. All of a sudden, that boy stayed right, middle in. And he, that bat was react very well, very quick. So here's what I'm noticing about White Sox games this year. Um, so both of these home runs were with two strikes. It seems like there's a lot of two-out rallies Yes. A lot of two-strike hits, two-strike, two-out rallies, not only for the White Sox, but a lot against them as well. And we saw it again here tonight. I, I, 
It just feels like there's more of them this year. I don't know why. Well, in the past, they had a lot of hits. Or a lot of people get on base. Yeah. Remember, say, every time it's two out, I go to bed, these guys get on base. Well, so yeah. right now, they have better bats with two strikes mm -hmm. and yeah. two out. They got better bats. Uh, most of the rally, a lot of rally start after two outs. And it's something, you know, I mean, that means you're not going to go there. You don't want to be the last out in that particular inning. Yeah. And that's why those guys go in there and battle. Yeah, the White Sox scored their second run completely uh, with two outs. There was no one on base. And that's how Andrew Penitendi got the second run in with an RBI. Uh, I think it was a single or a double. Here's a field coverage pitch and recap brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. We're going to talk about Mike Clevenger here because, I mean, so he outpitched Nick Lodolo completely, but there was that one, one bad pitch that led to three runs. So in all, four runs, six innings, one walk, eight strikeouts. So what did you see from Clevenger? It's going to start with us showing all this good but it ends with one really, really, really bad moment for him in the White Sox. I think, you know, I mean, that guy is a very, very aggressive. Look at the breaking ball right around middle in. And there's one thing about him. He's not afraid to pitch in. Look at the slider. Spend the strikes on. You know, it, this man is just, he keep the ball in without panic. You can see that. The, the ball give up the home run. Yeah. He's supposed to be in like this one. That ball was in and off. But you see, you keep the ball in, especially with two strikes. Mm -hmm. I want to see where he wanted the ball on the home run. I think you say he wanted it in and it went over the plate. Is that what happened? Yes, every time he left the ball out, out of the plate. You see? Ball in. Yeah. And just he, he stay in, stay in, stay with the guy. There it is. You see? That ball yeah. went in and the yeah. ball just a little bit turned to the middle of the plate. And he gave up that he gave up the home run. And that was with two strikes. It was a full count. So Sebi wanted it outside and he went inside and uh, here's another 3 2 pitch, and there's a strikeout. Ends his night with a strikeout there. Goes it, six innings. He threw the ball good. To me, I threw the ball good. Just got one bad inning with people on base. Pitching that ballpark, you cannot have the luxury to let, you know, I mean, to give people on base because in one swing, mm -hmm. everything changed. We've seen it with the White Sox last night, yesterday, yeah. last night, and we've seen it today with the Reds. With anything can happen in that ballpark. My side went into this series feeling greedy. I wanted to sweep. I'm being so do I because they need to. Especially the team they're going to face for the next couple of weeks. I think they're going to have opportunity. Obviously, baseball, this is a big lead. You yes. never know what's going to happen. Yeah. But I feel comfortable. That's after I saw the game yesterday, I said, well, you know, those guys take soon the bat better. Yeah. Today, the, the bullpen, they shut them down right away. Yeah, and that's the thing you can't expect. Like, how, you don't know who's coming in. You don't know when they're coming in. Yeah, that's, and, uh, you know what I mean? That's, uh, well, I've got to get credit, too, but, you know, Colome. A struggle, then hit a ground ball, don't play to end up the inning. Yeah. Hit the tee right there in the game. That's he did. Tee hit the ground ball, so all of a sudden, the, the tie run is in, at the plate. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, Vonnie hit a ground ball, don't play. Right, so it's 4-3, to three, bottom of the seventh inning, Gregory Santos comes in. Okay, what happens? He gets two outs. There's nobody on base. This is like an ongoing theme. We're seeing it so much. And it's John in India, TJ Friedel. They strike again. India just he's finding a way to get on base. I don't mind seeing this guy with the White Sox uniform. Oh, what are you trying to say? You're trying to make I, a trade? I, I just say that. No, I'm not, I the last thing I want to be in, in baseball would be the GM. And this guy hit the gap. Look, he scored so from first base. He scored from first base at that ballpark. You got to have some speed. Yeah. Because that ballpark is just like like he's looking like a like a bullfight arena. Yeah. Very small. So I think the White Sox actually could have had Jonathan India on their team. How? Hold on a second. I'm pretty sure the White Sox drafted Nick Madrigal in front of... Oh, now Jonathan you ruined my day. Uh, hold on a second. Now you're... I, we all I'm respect Googling to it right here on the set. This is what we do on live TV sometimes. Let me just do this and make sure I'm... Jason should know. Well, Jason's producing the show. Okay. So hold on. He's busy right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> In my mind. Yeah, so uh, the White Sox drafted Madrigal with the fourth overall pick, second baseman, and uh, John and India went to the Reds right after Madrigal. There I was some talk about maybe they draft India. I, 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 so I, I hope Jerry not watching our show right now. <laughs> be honest with you. Yeah, he would have really? solved, solved the White Sox problems at second base. Ooh, what's, it still can resolve the problem for a future. Make, make a trade? I, I think the... I, 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 
Tomorrow we've yeah, got yeah, to talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I have way, some thoughts no, about what... Tomorrow I will say, this is a trade that should yeah, make for that kid yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here, Chuck. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Oh, oh I'll bet you... We are I, thinking we, the same thing. We say about that, I say stay away from White Sox business with yes, you guys. Yes, exactly. We're, we're, you know what? We will stay away from White Sox business. No, or, I get paid to say what I think I can, and just say. Okay, so you want to, tomorrow on the pregame show, you're going to make I, a John and India trade? I might do that. Or you want to do it right now? No, I, I, right now I, I got to see the roster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way... If the, the people are going to offer the Cincinnati Red, oh, yeah. they're going to say, hell no. They're not going to. They're not, not trading John in India. They're just not going to do no, it. No, well, the right guy is. They will trade him. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, Cincinnati Reds, if you're watching the show, and I know you're not, uh, we would like to make a, make a trade for John in India. We will send it to you tomorrow. Uh, Eloy, we have an Eloy update. Do we have an Eloy update? Uh, yes. Oh, st uh, statement? We have a statement from the White Sox. Here we go. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh my goodness. I, got I told it. you. So, Eloy Jimenez underwent an apodectomy this evening in Cincinnati. He's expected to be discharged later tonight. He'll return to, the, to Chicago, begin his recovery. He's expected to miss four to six weeks uh, preliminary. He had a complaint of abdominal pain overnight and was taken to the hospital for further evaluation, which identified a Acute appendicitis. What I say? What you say? I told you. I hope it's oblique, but this I couldn't even say appendicitis in, in English. You told me. What you just say? What you just say? Yeah. I said something yeah. here. When, and and that's 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 what it was, man. I said I was hoping it was not an appendicitis. Yeah, you did. But I say that not my can happen now. I, I thought it was the the, the 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 part of the month. Well, Maybe my boy's laughing out there. <laughs> no, I'm not going to lie to that. I, I, I don't want to say anything either. I just can't. Well, you know what? It's not the first time White Sox play without him. No, but this has been, and I feel bad for Aloy. I'm, this, I do, this too. This came out of nowhere. But this is the bad gray he carrying the ball club. An eight-game hitting streak. What? I don't know how you get that. I got to Google that to see how you get it. My food or... <sighs> I remember I remember. I went through it with uh, Bob Abreu. Mm -hmm. Bob Abreu got that. We drive into the beach in Venezuela, and yeah. he got that problem. All of a sudden, we get there. Oh, check the doctor. Emergency! They gotta, they gotta, they gotta have a surgery on him right away because it was that was that's a better danger, danger place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm glad he's the he's recovered and he's gonna re, gonna start recovering. But man, I mean, here's a guy who just can't, for all various reasons, many reasons. Clearly, this was not his doing. How can it be? cannot stay on the field, and now it's four to six weeks without him. What does this do for this that, that, team right now? I know well, you say they've learned to play without him. Moncada got to come out right now. They had to. And Moncada put Moncada in second base. Well, so who's playing third? They have uh, the, the kids that play oh, today. play Hans Roberto. Yeah, that? you know, I tried to give, make this team better, but I don't know Moncada can play. Moncada played two days in second base. Gonna give, his legs are going to be killed him. Mm -hmm. I don't know so the, you're saying put him at second base because it'll be easier on his back? Now, you move more in second base than you move in second. So why do you want to move him to second base? To get Alberto. And, well, you know, Alberto can play second base. How about Elvis? Alberto Andrew? can play second base. Yeah, he can play this, second. This guy's like seven thousand pounds. He plays second base. Plays first place. Where? Second. He's played second base. When and where? Uh, last year with the Dodgers. He played second base. No, he was. They put him in second base. He don't play second base. That make him move. Uh, he did. I don't oh, know how many right. games he played at okay. second base, but he played some second base last year. I'm not saying he was a gold glover, but he can play second base. Well, yeah, I play left field. You <laughs> yeah, for I mean, one game. Yeah, that's, that's, that's... We need to show that again, actually. Why? Because you said it, and it's funny. And you played well in Wait a minute. He managed playing left field. You don't think I can play left field? I, you did. He okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm going to hit like him. I'm yeah. never even close to hit like that guy. But making the place in the field, I, I take my chance. Yeah, but so four to six weeks... We're wow. talking, so we're talking, he's back in the Ooh, middle of July. June or July. July. Around July, after, after the All-Star break, maybe. I mean, they've lost Berger. He's out for, you know, Bleak. Now it's Jimenez. Get he Hermes back. <laughs> Hermes Schneider. Get Hermes back. Yeah. Hermes Schneider. Get Hermes back. Now, why was he able to get guys back sooner than what you're saying why? Like today? Well, that's easy. Heard me say, uh, you hurt? Yeah, I got something about me. He said, okay, let's go to the training room. Mm -hmm. Heard me, it torture you. Torture you. It torture you. Yeah. Next day, he said, you know what? I'm, I'd rather play with, with pain for three hours than be with Hermie for seven, eight hours in the training room. Yes. He said, well, you're not playing? I said, okay, tomorrow you'll be here 
Uh, tomorrow's the case of three, be here at seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, yeah. And at 12, you say, Hermie, I think I've got to see I can play. Then all of a sudden, you come back, you know you can play, yeah. but you don't want to be in that situation with Hermie. I love it. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to hear from Pedro Grafal, I'm assuming, and he'll talk about more about Aloy, but this is. Uh... That's just sad, man. I, 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 I'm just. Yeah, I. That's just sad. Because... You're getting our reaction live on the one, air. In one guy. The one guy yeah. he kept carrying a ball club. Yes. With his office is that kid. Mm -hmm. And with the white side, I know T.A. is a good hitter. Pantera had a chance to be a good hitter. But I think when this guy's on, the way it was, it, is one, it could have been one of the best in the league. It's not the best in the league, but it could have been one of them. But at least top five, top ten in the league when he produced in the way he should yeah. be produced. I mean, if you're trying to catch up to this whole thing, so he went one for four last night, went to the uh, hotel, started feeling some pain in his stomach. It got worse overnight, went to the hospital this morning, and here uh, live on the air we find out that uh, the preliminary, he had appendicitis, apodectomy, and uh, preliminary uh, recovery is four to six weeks. So uh, just crappy news for I'm so a lot of the White Sox. I'm very proud. Of what? I listen to what you just say in English. Yeah. Wow, bro. What do you mean? You say, that to me, prodicitis, but it's well, us. it's my first language. Oh, yes? Yeah. Okay. Huh? yeah so I, I, say, I, I can say I know that. a lot of people, first language is, is American, and they can pronounce and say what you just say. I, I try to be. Try to be a professional broadcaster, and I try to speak as clear as I possibly can, which does not always happen. Oh, since you've been working with me, you, you got a little bit of Aussie. I know. I've, <laughs> I've, I've gotten more and more... What's the word I'm looking for for that one? I'm just going to go to break. Um, <laughs> we're going to hear from Pedro Grafal his thoughts on what happened uh, with Aloy, the loss as well. We're coming right back. Stay tuned.